everyone. Welcome to Mass Appeal on this terrific Tuesday. I'm Ashley Cole. And I'm Seth Soda. Not only is it a terrific Tuesday, some might say it's a tasty Tuesday today. I feel like it always is. Well, That's it's not always point. tasty Tuesday, but every Tuesday is tasty because we always have Chef Bill in the kitchen, whether it be Chef Secrets or for a delicious slow cooker meal, yes. which is what we're doing today. What I want to do is I want to paint everybody at home a picture. Oh, you're coming home from a hard day at work. Your kids are so hungry. All you need to do is this, and the meal is done. It's that easy. It's that easy. It's that easy. And that's why a lot of people think of slow cookers as a winter kind of thing. But actually, use it all year round, especially, you know, now that we're back in, into the swing of things with the, the fall season. And it just makes life easier when everything's so hectic. And I talk to a lot of people, because I, I love my slow cooker, and yeah. especially now with, you know, working and having kids. And a lot of people are scared of them. They say, oh, I'm, I just don't know, you know, I don't know how it's going to turn out. I'm nervous. So... I think it is one of those things that it's you have to at least just try it. Worst thing that happens is you have to cook dinner. Ex it exactly. Turn out yeah, well. Order a pizza. That's exactly it. That's the guy thing. I was going to say order a pizza too. <laughs> so we do. That's exactly it. And, and the thing is about a slow cooker is you really have to work hard to mess it up because the food's cooking slowly. It's going to be moist and tender when it comes out. It could be a whole chicken. It could be uh, the beef that we're doing today. All of those things. And it just makes life so easy. So once you do it the first time, you're right. You're going to say, wow, that was so easy. Who knew? Yeah, exactly. And because also a lot of people are intimidated because so many recipes have you brown the food first, whether it be a beef or chicken, and you want to get sear it and then put it in the pot. And that's an extra step when you're so busy. And the recipe that I've got today is you don't have to do that. Throw everything in. Go off to work. Yes, Perfect. please. Yep. And so what I've done, uh, I've started out with, I've mixed all the sauce together. And this took me all of about one minute and 12 seconds. I timed myself. So that's how fast it can be. That's doable. It's doable. And what I've got in here is I've got some sliced onion. I've got some ketchup. I've got uh, chicken stock. And I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, I've also got some balsamic vinegar and orange juice. So uh, I always like to put the liquid in first. Okay. Do you have a tomato paste in there? Or not? Uh, that's ketchup. Just got oh, a little bit ketchup. lumpy with I all these you. other things there. So that is ketchup. But also, I had some chopped up tomatoes lying around. I thought, you know something? Throw them in. Why not? And so uh, the key ingre ingredients, though, in this recipe uh, is the balsamic vinegar. And that's what's going to give you a nice oomph, a bit of a, a bite to it. But also, uh, not just the orange juice, but orange zest. And these two things are the key. Everything else, you can change around the ingredients a little bit. So I'm just going to put the orange zest in last right now. And I've always been a sucker for zest. I like using my microplane to just get the zest right in there. And if it, you cook the zest for eight hours, you're not going to lose any of that zesty flavor? Nope. I guarantee when we take a bite out of this in a little while, you're going to say, wow, that's a nice that's zesty. That's so zesty, Bill. That's zesty. And now it's ready to go. <laughs> And, and so all of a total of even in taking the beef out of the package, say you put two and a half minutes into this, that's a long time. Wow. And Seth, the famous words of set it and uh, forget it. Set it and forget it. I can't. I think that's Ron Popeil, though. No, I'm giving you the credit. <laughs> Done. All because, right. Because I haven't met Ron Popeil, but I've Good. met you. And if Ron Popeil's lawyers are watching, my name is Mitchell. <laughs> there you go. But, but I, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I have a question. Did, did I miss, is the balsamic in there already? I've already mixed in the balsamic vinegar. Oh, I've thrown in garlic. All the, I just figured I'd throw all the liquids in together. And really, it's just as simple. You don't even have to go for a really expensive, fancy balsamic. Uh, this one, just a regular off-the-shelf one. That is so easy. You didn't have to. You just threw everything into a bowl and just throw it, it all in there. Exactly. And you put the beef. I notice on top of the. Yes. And sauce. what's going to happen is juices are going to come out of the beef. I put about a cup of liquid in there. You're going to end up with over two cups, so a quart of liquid. But the key thing to remember is there's so many different kinds of beef you can go with. Uh, this is a, a round roast. This is leaner than the other, so it's not going to be as moist as, say, uh, a chuck roast, which is the traditional pot roast, or a brisket. However, it's still going to be very moist with the sauce. The reason the others are so moist is they're fattier. So this oh. is a leaner, healthier cut. Now, it's not going to dry out on top because there's nothing on top. It, it's kind of a convection thing almost, exactly. right? Exactly. This is what's called braising, where you've got it. Usually when you braise, it comes, uh, the liquid comes about halfway or two-thirds the side up the side of the pan. However, with the lid on, with a slow cooker, you're also steaming it and getting a lot of liquid around there. So that's not going to dry out as though you're just putting a roast beef in the oven. Very cool. So it just works out easier that way. And again, that's why literally you do just walk away. You don't have to worry about is it going to be moist enough? Is it going, uh, uh, is it going to be half moist, half dry? 
that takes care of 40. That's just one of the great secrets about a slow cooker. Now, is this a four, a six, or an eight hour slow cooker? Uh, all of the above. I'm putting this in for eight <laughs> hours. This can go all those times. This recipe calls for eight hours. Uh, you can go six hours if you want. The longer you cook it, it's just going to break apart and, and be uh, okay. uh, 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 more flaky, if you can refer to meat as flaky. But uh, this is eight hours, and this particular one has a warmer at the end. So it'll keep it warm. However, you, know, you don't have to rush home you know, eight hours after you put it on and say, oh my gosh, you know, it's all going to go cold. You still have a couple of hours. Even if you don't have a warming temperature, let it sit there. The warmth is going to stay there. It'll still be plenty warm, say you're delayed in getting home. Very okay, cool. I know what I'm making for dinner tonight. Thank you so much, Chef Bill. Thank you. We're not done with you, though, because you can't have a pot roast without some potatoes. Yeah, we've got so some potatoes. You're going to show us uh, a new way, yep. some new ways to make potatoes that will be delicious with our pot roast. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Very cool. Uh, Welcome back to Master, and we're back with personal chef Bill Collins, chefbill.com. You have a knife skills book out too, but we're making mashed potatoes. We're doing a little tweak on them, right? We are, and actually, we're doing a mashed potato pancake. So you can either do this fresh or uh, if you have some leftover mashed potatoes. This is the ultimate uh, Black Friday day after Thanksgiving meal, too. Uh, this does qualify. Yes, it does. And actually, we have to remember that for uh, end of November. Yeah, come on back. But here's what you do you've got your mashed potatoes, and in this case, it left the skin on. And because it's you know more flavorful, easy because you know, more nutritious. It, there's that too, but the secret to these is grated onion, as opposed to sliced onion. As opposed to sliced dice, even if you chop it so finely, minusculely, you get a nice little crunch, mouthfeel from it. But what you're not going to get the full flavor. And here's what I mean by grated onion: you can use a box grater, use a food processor. But what happens is, in this case, I'm using this oh, grater. Oh, like a pulp. And it is, it's a complete pulp, but what's, what's happening is not only is it a pulp, you see how that there's a lot of liquid in there, it's going to uh -huh. be more I do the whole thing. You're not crying on me, are you, Seth? No, but what I'm thinking is this probably makes people cry a whole lot more than your regular onion, right? It really does, and that's part of the fun if you're not a crier <laughs> over onions. It's also but part of the fun because Ashley's about five feet away from us She is, right and now. she's in tears as we speak. She might be. But here's the thing, this is what's going to give you all that flavor. It's worth the crying. <laughs> because it's it's going to have an oniony flavor throughout uh, the dish, and that's really what's what's going to give you more of the flavor. And this is an old Pennsylvania Dutch recipe. And what I do is I just throw in an egg to your leftover mashed potatoes. Okay. And even if you put milk in and sour cream and butter, whatever you like to put in there, and I've already put some in here. Actually, I'll throw a little bit more in. Is even if you've already done that, uh, you put the other things in. Throw in the grated onion and throw in an egg, and the egg will help keep everything together. Egg always acts as a binder in recipes. Egg's a binder because just, just think of a scrambled egg when you throw it in the pan and you know goes in all nice and loose and it comes up all bound together. It, yeah. it's, it's coagulated. Huh. And that's a medical term. It's coagulated, I think. It's coagulated. Thank you. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> and uh, don't worry, I won't use that line again. Good. That's, uh, there's a C in a circle with my name on it. There you go. So, uh, and now all you do is just uh, throw them in a little bit of olive oil or canola oil, but I like to use olive oil. Now, uh, sometimes when I try to make these, they stick to the pan. Yes. Is, this, is the olive oil the save all? Will it not if we have a sufficient amount of oil? No. Uh, okay. It's not the type of oil. Good try. Uh, it's actually it's the temperature. So you want to make sure that it's hot. And what I like to do, because I already got this heated beforehand, heat the pan without any oil in it. And then keep spritzing little bits of water. I always like to keep a cup of water by the, the, uh, the stove. Mm -hmm. Spritz a little bit of water without oil in there because it's going to splatter yes. back. And if you get a nice sizzle going on, Put in the oil, wait about 10, 20 seconds. It'll get hot that quickly because we're not deep frying. No. There's just a little bit, a little more than a skim coat of oil in there. So why do you put the oil in second after you've after you've heated the pan? Because it's often hard to tell when is the oil ready. Oh, and okay. And so there are a couple of things you can do. You can take a little piece of onion and just throw it in the oil, and as it cooks and starts to sizzle, you go, okay, I know it's ready then. Uh, but a lot of people, as I said, they figure, oh, I'll just do a little spritz of water. That's dangerous. I guarantee it will go back to you. And we don't want that. So it's really not only just a safety thing, mm -hmm. but also uh, it's a timing thing because it's one thing to check when the oil's ready, but what if you check and it's too late and you put your little piece of onion in and it turns black immediately? The oil's yeah. too hot. That means you have to slow down, back up, and you might have already burned the oil. This just gives you, as in the cook, enough control over this to say, okay, it's ready. I can start cooking this now. You could add a whole plethora of leftovers to these potatoes too, I imagine. You could, whatever you have, throw them in. And uh, because, uh, just as I was saying earlier about the, the beef and the slow cooker, where the secret is the uh, vinegar and the, uh, uh, the orange zest, 
The secret to this are the grated potatoes. I'm, I'm sorry, the, the grated, grated onions. onions. And that's what's going to give you a different kind of wow flavor. And it's got enough time for the onion to heat through and bring out the flavor. Now, in the mornings, I love to make myself, you know, Sunday mornings, bacon, eggs, and I would love to add these into it. Could I be really lazy, add a lot of eggs, and just make really eggy potatoes, or should I do it separately? Uh, do it separately because okay. uh, otherwise you're going to end up with, uh, well, it'll be kind of a cool looking dish. <laughs> you but like something that looks like gruel. Yeah, it'll be kind of uh, Seth's version of hash. Okay. And because you have a corned beef hash and other things, in this case, I think it would just be kind of a big goopy mess with some egg thrown in there. Be kind of a cool idea, but I'm not sure that's what you want for your Sunday morning. <laughs> we'll work on it. Yeah, we'll come up with something good by the end of the show because we're going to finish this recipe and we're also going to finish our slow cooker. The beef, right? yep, it's going to be ready. Perfect. Don't you go anywhere. We're going to finish them all and then the best part, we're we're gonna have a taste, right? And we are. A little bit later, don't go anywhere. We are back with personal chef Bill Collins. Chefbill.com is the website. We're finishing up the whole darn thing because we've been cooking all show long. And it hasn't been eight hours, but it's TV magic happening, right? It's right, it's TV eight hours. And so as a result, we have here, voila, a balsamic orange uh, beef. And this oh, is... Oh, that smells amazing, Bill. Yep, it's, it's actually uh, a favorite of mine. And thankfully, I left my tongs back behind us. So I'm going to lift this out with so creative. two spoons. Yeah, well, I you got know, them for you. That's a miracle of television. No. <laughs> now, are we going to shred this, cube this? What are we going to do to it? Uh, I'm thinking I'm probably cubing it. Okay. Uh, as opposed to a brisket or uh, uh, a pot roast, which is a chuck roast, uh, when you buy it at the supermarket, it really falls apart more easily. Round roasts generally don't fall apart you know, uh, as we like to say, off the bone as much. So I'm just going to slice it down like that. It's still incredibly flavorful. Oh, I'm gonna use my good. hands. That's the spirit. That's We're all the friends here. spirit. Oh, now, that looks good. a couple of ways you can serve this too is you can slice it up like that, but I'm gonna go for a different look this time. And I am going to cube it up because we're gonna have all kinds of sauce with the potatoes. This works really well when you've got um, uh, uh, mashed potatoes as a whole or have it over rice, over pasta. Mm -hmm. Now we're going with our little mashed potato pancakes, but I'm going to kind of give a nice little presentation on the plate. Right now, that doesn't look so great, but it will in a moment. <laughs> I trust you. Oh, yeah. thank you. So I'm just going to uh, uh, put some up to the side like that as I throw it all over the plate <laughs> because that's what I do. Now, sauce wise, can we use the sauce that we've created in our slow cooker to put on top of this? Oh, that's exactly what we're going to do. That's okay. the bonus here. That's exactly it. It's a built-in sauce. It's a built-in sauce. Now we've got the mashed potato pancakes. Oh, they're like little baby pancakes. The itty bitties. And so the thing is, you can make a big, huge honking one, or you can make smaller ones. So even if you're doing uh, like a, a nicer presentation, uh, a, a more fancy dinner, I do these for all kinds of dinners. And this just gives you that nice presentation uh, of a smaller, smaller food. Right, so it's not just one big, like you said, honking potato exactly. pancake. Exactly. So I'm just going to reach across you like that, and with this undersized spoon, I am yeah. just, thank you. Undersized. That's it. Here, I oh, can what? help too. Oh, everybody's so in on this. Let's, this. let's do this. Let's make life easy, right? Isn't that what this show's all about, <laughs> yeah. is making you know, your life easier? Yeah, for you that's and exactly your family. For it. Chef Bill and you at home. That's it. So More? I'm gonna keep it going. Okay, I'm it, gonna keep it going. Keep it going. And even if you wanted to drizzle some over the potatoes or not. You, but you see, you've whatever got the you want me to there. do. A, and so, just, isn't that nice? And so, from the flavor, you also get, uh, I mean, from the fragrance, you get the, uh, the orange and you get the balsamic and some really nice, and the red wine. Some really nice flavors going in there. Nice. This looks Look amazing. Look at this. Beautiful. And so, if you'd like to uh, take the plunge. Oh, here's my question. Yes. Of course I will. I, I would always say, um, I always want to put more vegetables in. Is there a way that I could put vegetables in here and that wouldn't be, you know, mushy enough by the time this is over? Or do I have to prepare them separately? Uh, the short answer is yes. Prepare them separately. All the above. Okay. Because you, if, if you can prepare them separately, or if you get home, say maybe a couple of hours early, mm -hmm. uh, you know, before it comes out, throw the vegetables in them because oh. carrots, carrots are going to turn to mush. Onions, they're just so so they'll hold up to anything. But yeah. the carrots, there'll still be some firmness, but it'll be a little mushier. But wait, we need to check in with. Uh, that is so yummy. Here, the, you talk the, for a the, while so I can eat this. Beef is cooked 
perfect. It like it melts in your mouth, but it doesn't it doesn't fall apart, but it melts in your mouth. Exactly. It, it is so good. And, oh my gosh. And the orange really kind of jumps out at you. And yeah. that's just from the in zest of orange. In a great way, yeah. Exactly. And so mm. I really like using that because you know I like using a lot of lemon zest and, and, and lime zest. But the orange and the balsamic and the beef, I mean, figure sometimes when you go to a uh, uh, an Asian restaurant, they've got orange beef on the menu. Mm -hmm. It's such a great combination. You just don't always think don't about always it. don't always think about it. You know what that tastes like? What? More. Yeah, there you go. Tastes like, if you want my, uh, this recipe, go to mymassappeal.com later today. It has Ashley's stamp of approval, Chef Bill. I love having you here. Thank you. Enjoy.